Yo, what is up guys, welcome to the video. Today I'm gonna show you how to get the right frequency balance on your songs, as this way you get that extra 5-10% to make your track sound professional. To do this, I'm gonna be using some really easy techniques that are gonna help you to get that sound of professional tracks, but you need to know that this is not gonna solve your mixing problems. A lot of people tell me how to mix a track, but mixing is not just one thing. Mixing is basically everything I show here in the channel. So to mix well a track, you need to take care about EQing, about giving a space to the sounds, you know, the panning, making sounds more narrow and wider, the balance of the volumes, reverb and all these things. And I don't want to wait more to start with this tutorial so don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to this channel because this way you can support me, it's free for you, it's easy to do it, you know, it just takes one second maybe or even less. And this way I can keep continuing making these videos for you so you keep learning, I keep teaching you and all these things. And also if you want to know more about my daily life, follow me on Instagram because I post daily things, sometimes I do Q&As, you know, sometimes I show you what I'm doing, where I'm going and all these things. So with that being said guys, don't wait more and let's start with this tutorial. So for this tutorial I decided to use my track I never wanted that if you didn't check I recommend to check it and this track is already mixed I really took care about the queuing about the leveling about everything so this would be like when I'm going to master the track and guys let's do one thing if you want a mastering tutorial let's try to get 200 likes on this video and if we reach that I will make a mastering tutorial just for you and to get that extra sound that we want I'm gonna be using some reference songs in this case I'm gonna be using here tonight my track with Colin Clues and Axel Lost Soul by Dennis Coyu and Light Lives Feel Mark and Tonics and Private Rain uh, Fall in Love I always recommend you to have reference songs when you're mixing when you're producing when you're mastering and everywhere because for example when you're producing if you run out of ideas you can check those tracks and maybe you get an idea of any of those tracks when you're mixing you're gonna know how loud should be everything you know how much reverb and all these things and when you're mastering you can use this technique that I'm gonna show you now and of course try to get reference tracks that sound more or less similar to your track for example if you make impressive house or deep house don't have a big room track as reference because it's not gonna sound the same you know so now that we have our track mix and we have some reference tracks I recommend to align the drops I'm gonna go to the master and I'm gonna open ozone 9 match EQ and this is the technique I'm gonna be using today the match EQ what this is gonna do is basically take the EQ of the reference track take your EQ and match them you know apply some uh, boost and reductions to make it sound similar so just to do it really quick what you're gonna do is go here and apply to and then I'm at two you're gonna click on capture and you're gonna play your song so now that your song is playing as you can see we can see here uh, frequency balance, you know, the, the frequency of your track and it's gonna take the average value on every frequency. You don't need to play the entire track and what I recommend to play is just the first part of the drop or the second part, depends on if you are adding to a lot of things. And now we're gonna do the same but with our reference tracks, so for example I'm gonna start with here tonight, so click on capture and play it. So now it's gonna do the same and don't worry if the reference track maybe is louder and it's around here or even if it's quieter because Ozone 9 is not gonna take care about that. And of course try to play the songs for the same time, you know, don't play your track for 30 seconds and the reference track on 5 seconds, it's not gonna work well. Or don't play your song in the drop and the reference song in the breakdown. So now as you can see it's gonna apply an EQ. What I recommend to do now is boost the smoothing a little bit, I usually put it on 70% and then I recommend to boost the amount, not to apply it like this but to know what is doing. So as we can see we have a bit too much sub bass, we need a little bit of boost here in the mids and of course we need some more brightness. And now I'm gonna click here on game match because this way when we disable and enable this plugin it's gonna have the same loudness. And this is gonna be good because we tend to think that louder things are better and maybe it's not. So this way we're gonna hear a track at the same loudness but with the different EQ. So we're not gonna know what's better and what's worse. So well, let's listen now, of course this is gonna be way too much. And knowing that this is too much, I like it because it gives a lot of brightness. So what I'm gonna do is reduce it, you know, maybe on 20%. Usually I leave it somewhere around here, you know, that this is like half dB, maybe one dB. But does this mean that you need to apply this much EQ? Maybe not, maybe the other tracks were better. So what I'm gonna do now is do exactly the same thing with the other reference songs. So I'm gonna open a new match EQ and remember to disable the previous match EQ because otherwise that is gonna be applied before going to this new match EQ and you don't want this. So now I'm gonna click on capture I'm gonna record my track and now here I'm gonna capture the reference song and as you can see here we have a really big reduction because this track basically here has no highs and this is not because 
that track has caught there, you know, it's not because Dennis Coyo decided to reduce the highs, it's because of MP3. So my advice is to try to have always wave tracks as reference because of these things, but if not, you can do this. With this magic key, you have here those things that are basically bands where you can select where you want this magic key to be applied. So this is so useful, and what I'm going to do now is, instead of having it like this and have this reduction on my track that we shouldn't have, I'm going to move this until we don't have this reduction, so a bit more and here. And now I'm going to put the smoothing on 70 as the track and I'm going to put it on 50-60% just to check how it sounds. So without this magic key and with it. I kind of like the mids of it, it adds a bit more body, but it reduces too much the high, so probably what I would do is something like this, and of course not too much, so maybe 20%. And now I'm going to do exactly the same, but with the third reference song. And as you can see, this track is also in MP3, so reduce this. I'm going to put it on 70%, I'm going to increase to 50 or 60, just to check what's doing on the track. And as you can see, it's doing more or less as the, lo as the previous track, as Lost Soul, it's increasing a bit the mids and reducing here on the highs. Yeah, too much reduction here, I don't like it. And maybe too much reduction also on the sub. A bit better like this, I'm gonna put it also on 20%. So what should you do now? What we're going to do is check those magic cues, but without knowing what magic cue is with what reference track. Because right now I know that the first magic cue that was with my track here tonight gave a bit more brightness to the track and I like that. So I have this in mind, but I don't want to think about this when I'm comparing the magic cues. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go here on the master, I'm going to move uh, the plugins, you can do it with the wheel of the mouse. So I'm going to just move that as you can see and I'm gonna do this several times okay just like this so now I don't really know maybe if you took care about this you know it but I don't know it I don't know what magic key is of what track so now when I enable them I'm just gonna check how it sounds and I'm not gonna know what is the reference song of this magic key so just check them Okay, so I like this one. And then between those two, I couldn't decide. Yeah, this one sounds a bit cleaner, so I'm gonna delete this one, and now I'm gonna compare between those two. I kind of like them too because one is giving more brightness and the other one is giving a bit more body. So what I'm going to do is use them too. But what I'm going to do is in, in the second one, don't touch here the sub bass. Okay, so maybe I'm just going to do it like this. So it touches only the mids because it's the part that I like in this magic queue. So now what you need to do is just send this to your mixed track like this. Click on save preset as, click on drag and delete them from the master. I recommend you to do this because this way, now if you want to compare your track with reference songs, that match EQ is not going to be applied on the master. Because if it's on the master, that EQ is going to be on your track but also on the reference songs. So you're not going to compare well your track. But guys, this is not everything. I'm going to show you another thing that you can do to get the right balance on your track. And it's by using the tonal balance control. If you go here, you can see a lot of different presets that every preset is going to change those bands here. And those bands is where your track should be, in the sub, in the mids, in the mid highs and the highs. And the cool thing about this is that you can put, as you can see, the values of some tracks that you like. So what I'm gonna do now is take one of those reference tracks that I have, I'm gonna put it inside tonal balance, so this way I'm gonna have the right balance of those tracks. So this way I'm gonna know if I have a good balance or not. To do this, just click here and create target from audio file. And now, as you can see, this is the bands of here tonight. But should you play now your track with these bands? My advice is no first play that track that you use it here to create these bands. Because of course this is the average sub bass that this track has, the reference one. But what you don't know is if in the drop is around here, if it's around here, or if it's around here. So let's play the reference song. And as we can see the sub bass is more or less in the upper mid half. The, in the low mid we are kind of low, you know, maybe the size we, we, ha we can have this mouse in the middle. In the mid highs is basically on top. And on the highs is basically where this line is, you know, so take those reference points. And now let's play our track. I'm gonna click here to reset, I'm gonna play my track.
So we see the more or less on the sub we are okay, maybe we have a bit more. We have more low mids as you can see. On the mid highs is, is quite good and on the highs is also more or less at the same point. So I'm gonna open now an Ozone 9 equalizer and this tonal balance 2 has a function that it didn't have the first and is that you can click here, you can choose the EQ and now you can move here the EQ and it's gonna be applied of course in the queue we opened. So now what I'm gonna do is apply some subtle changes to try to get more or less the, the same balance as here tonight, the reference track in this case. So as we could see we have a bit too much sub bass and mid and we need a bit more mid highs and highs. So I'm just gonna take this one, I'm gonna go around here, I'm gonna reduce a little bit. I don't want this one, something like this, but I don't recommend you to go really crazy with this, you know, so maybe like half dB, maybe 1 dB maybe is too much, and I'm gonna just increase here a little bit. So just this EQ is gonna help a little bit to get a, a closer balance as the reference track. And if you want, what you can do is also go here on fine, and you're gonna see it this way, like it's more like a an analyzer, a Q analyzer. And as we can see, we are inside this uh, average value, so we are okay. And now, of course, as always say, compare before and after. Disable all these EQs, check your track with the reference songs, apply all these EQs and check your track with the reference songs. And of course, you can do it as I show you here when you already have your track mixed and export and maybe before the mastering, but you can also do it in the mixing, you know, in the project of a track. What you can do is take, for example, your leads and a stem of the leads of another track, maybe that you get on Remix Stem, something like this, and compare your leads to those leads, you know, and apply the match EQ. This way you're gonna see if you need more highs or maybe more mids or you know reduce on the mid highs or whatever this way is gonna be better because you're gonna solve the issue in the part that the issue is because maybe here we realize that we need a bit more highs but maybe those highs is just for the leads and not the entire track so if you do it in the mixing maybe you, what you can do is just increase the highs of the leads or maybe you can apply some white noise or whatever so guys this is how you can get a better frequency balance on your tracks to sound more similar as professional songs but well guys i hope this tutorial help you is something that i recommend you to do i always do it in all my tracks you know when I'm mastering it and also as I said when I'm mixing it it's something that helped me a lot when I discover it so I hope it helps you too don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss any tutorial thank you so much guys for watching and see you in the next video